So the day has finally come that we bridge the gap between the PvE community and the PvP community. Xenote, I really hope you're watching, man. So, the Arcanist is the most diverse class that has ever been released in the Elder Scrolls Online. It actually has the capabilities of the kit to turn a PvE build into a top tier meta bombing build in PvP. You think I'm kidding? Let's find out. Welcome back guys, I'm Horcrux, your Valiant host, and welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, or if you haven't liked and subbed already, please do so, and also hit the bell notification icon, because occasionally I do put out some pretty decent content. As a disclaimer, obviously since this is on the PTS and the Arcanist is not live, I don't have any PvP footage of this being in Battlegrounds or in Open World, but as a proof of concept, I do have a bunch of dueling clips I tossed together just so you guys can see the combo in action. Now there are many iterations of this bombing build that you can run, I still haven't tested everything out on the PTS, but what I have found that is most efficient and easiest to pull off is the one bar Oaken Soul build. So to all the PvE and PvP players out there that simply don't have thumbs or want a bar swap, well, yeah, don't have to. This video is just for you and me as well. And actually, not only is this the easiest way to pull off the build, I even tested an amalgamation of two bar builds and the damage is negligible and it's a lot harder to pull off the combo on a two bar build than a one bar build. So before we begin, let me address the elephant in the room. Yes, your boy Horcrux is very much aware that heavy attacks do not work on players in PvP. However, did you know that the Arcanist has a deployable monster for you? Yes, all of the passives and all the builds that work in PvE will work on this monster. Let me direct your attention to Resonating Glyphic. Now, this is a little jewel in the kit, so... If you guys are unfamiliar with what it does, it summons this Rubik's Cube in front of you and you can essentially attack it. Now, when you attack it, you do get amalgamation of healing and uh, so a little bit of weapon spell damage. It, it, it's really nothing to shake a stick at, but the big thing is that only you can attack it and whatever affects monsters, you know, whether that be Slayer or your heavy attack builds, Empowerment, for example, the off balance stats effect, all of that applies to this ultimate. On this particular build, I'm able to get crits usually consisting around 57k worth of damage, which is uh, pretty high, mind you. So it's very easy to set up the combo. It, it, it's not that difficult. You just want to toss it down and you're going to heavy attack. And then there are some snafus with it. You see here that the monster is actually persisting the entire time. Even though we kill it, there is a bug. I'm not exactly sure how to recreate this, but I will be doing some testing and how to actually recreate it to where you can keep it up even after death you guys saw that it should have died but it didn't so it stays at like one percent health the entire time and the good thing about it is that all your jewelry your bloodthirsty all that is going to apply now in a perfect world i'm able to get the crit all the way up to 57k but that does require a, a little bit of finagling because you do have some crit passes which we're going to go over and i'll show you exactly everything you need to know in the build and we're, we're going to do it right now right so when it comes to character sheet i mean you don't there's not a particular race that i would necessarily recommend i am a khajiit and the way i crafted this out i made it this isn't a, a straight up bombing build this is a hey you know i want to have a little bit of neutral game i don't want to just be one and done on my bombing there is so much optimization you can do to further increase the damage so let's kind of touch base on the character sheet none of this is really set in stone um, i am a khajiit um, as for the race i'm using bewitch sugar skulls of the food you know vampire stage three yada yada now keep in mind this is not optimized for bombing I literally just tossed the most well-rounded stats I possibly could. I have tri stats on everything. A lot of my traits are well-fitted, reinforced, which has nothing to do with bombing whatsoever. So there is still a lot of optimization that you can do on the build. Um, I actually encourage, this is what I want to see day one when the Arcanist goes live. I want to see amalgamation of bombing clips. I will actually do a series here on the channel of the best bombing Arcanist clips you guys can cook up. There's so many different ways you can build this. You can run Vicious Death, you can run a Q you can run a bunch of heavy attack sites undaunted on weaver undaunted evil trader noble duelist like the, the list just goes on there's so much you can do with this class and i still have to do a lot of testing on my part but this is going to be one of the most consistent most efficient ways to pull off the combo so if you guys figure out any better way to run the combo please let me know down in the comments send me an unlisted youtube video something i'll review it here on the channel and then we'll just kind of go from there but day one i want so many bombs 
in Cyrodiil. I want all the Zergs to just die, okay? I, I want I want everything to just explode and die, right? I don't think this is going to get nerfed. I think this is intended. I think Zenimax is a little bit smarter than or the devs, even though they are kind of stupid. You don't get me wrong. I do think this kit is very well thought out. And I think the nerfs to like the empowerment and sergeant's mails and stuff like that on the PTS only empowerment is a it used to be 80 percent uh, heavy attack damage now 70 percent. I think they know this is going to happen. So that's why they went ahead and pre nerfed a lot of these buffs. So what sets am I actually running? There are a few ways you can build this out. If you want to be a little bit closer to your opponents, you know, with a melee range, you run the Noble Duelist. I'm going to be running this in open world, probably in a small group of two or three. So you're always going to be in a melee range to practice that. You can run um, Noble Duelist, Undaunted Unweaver, Undaunted Infiltrator. I think those are going to be your three bread and butters. If you want to play a little bit closer up, you'll run Noble Duelist. And if you want to run range, you'll run Undaunted Unweaver and Undaunted Infiltrator. Now, the good thing about this ultimate is that it has a vertical component to it. So if you are Zergling, I'm not calling anyone out, but if you are in a group or whatever, and someone's chilling on the gate, you know, you know how they do. They, they kind of stack on the ram. Like the best thing about this is that you can cast this down on people, right? And then you can pull them in with your stun, and then you can just zip zap, zip zap with Undaunted on Weaver and Undaunted Infiltrator, and you're going to just absolutely melt and shred kids. Like it's crazy. Like it, you can get three full heavy attacks off before this orb expires, which is very, very important. So let's talk about the sets. You need to have a high crit value. I would suggest around 45% or higher if you're going to run the build this way. If you're gonna run acuity, obviously you don't have to worry about your critical, but we will be covering an acuity build later on, maybe this week or next week. It is much more difficult to pull it off, but you can push like 15% extra damage out of it and your, your windows are smaller. But anyway, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So here's how I have everything set up currently. So on the front bar, we do have a Lightning Staff and Nova Duels. If you want to run a ranged variant of this, you'll run Undaunted Unweaver instead of Noble Duels. So anywhere I have Noble Duels on this build, you will just substitute with Undaunted Unweaver instead. So Noble Duelist, uh, just like any heavy attack build, this is going to give you, when you deal damage with lighter heavy attack with a melee range, is going to increase the damage of your light heavy attacks by 2010 for 15 seconds. Uh, very basic. It does give you weapon spell damage, weapon spell damage, a little bit of stamina recovery, uh, which isn't bad. So we're running precise on this, again, to get as much crit as we possibly can, because on the Arcanist, you actually do have a crit passive, which is really, really strong. And then we're also running a Berserker damage enchantment. Having going into the monster set, we are running a one piece heavy reinforced slime crawl, which is going to give us crit. We also have a triglyph on this. Now, again, if you want to optimize this further, obviously you would not go heavy reinforced for a bombing build. You would do medium and then you would go divines and then you would have a max stamina enchantment on this because we are stacking max stamina on the build. So we do have a one piece noble duels on the body. Now, again, if you want to play a range variant of this bombing build, you will slot instead of noble duels, you will slot undaunted unweaver. And then the rest of the gear is going to be undaunted an infiltrator everything's gonna be tri-stat glitch you know with divines now when it comes to our mythics we do have one noble duelist uh, you want bloodthirsty definitely with a weapon and spell damage enchantment if you have open soul you want bloodthirsty weapon spell damage enchantment and then ring of noble duelist again bloodthirsty weapon damage enchantment the point of bloodthirsty is that when you're attacking your orb you notice a couple times already in the video that it sits at literally like zero percent health so you are getting the maximum benefit of bloodthirsty the 350 weapon spell damage while it remains at that state which is going to give you the most damage possible okay so hopping over into the skills now there is a formula with any heavy attack build number one you have to have empowerment well you get the empowerment buff from oaken soul so that's taken care of the next variable in the equation is that you need the off balance stats effect to increase the damage of your heavy attacks i think it's 50 percent. don't quote me on that but it is a lot of damage increase so the only way that i have figured out to do to do this since the arcanist does not have a built-in way to apply the off balance stats effect is coupling blockade of storms with elemental susceptibility so you pbe nerds out there will tell me well you can just use a shot glyph and when you put your blockade of storms down it'll prop the off balance stats effect the thing is you're going to have multiple multiple people in your storms and it is only going to apply the off balance stats effect to one person not necessarily who you're attacking with your live attacks there's a lot of rng that goes into it so if you want to land this consistently in order to have the off balance stats effect just on your orb not anyone around it you need to have it on your orb if it applies to someone else i mean that's fine 
The most consistent way to do it is have your blockade of swarms down and then right before you go in for your burst you'll just apply Ellie Drain and then this will give you the off balance stats effect and you can get one to two heavy attacks while the off balance stats effect is still active which is uh, really nice. So that's where these two abilities come in. Now if you find out a way to limit this to only using one ability which would free up a slot on the bar please let me know down in the comments on the discord but at the time of making this video i got tired of trying i couldn't figure it out maybe you guys are smarter than me probably so okay so we got the off balance and empowerment variable out of the equation the next is like okay how do you group everyone well we're not running dark convergence how are you going to do that well we do have a built-in kit ability called ruin displacement essentially what this is you will place it on a target and then after a two second delay it will just pull everyone in toward the center very similar to dark convergence the aoe is not as nice but it's still a decent amount of pull so there are a couple passes i need to point out before going forward one is a splintered secrets which isn't that big a deal this is just going to give you slow penetration for all the offensive abilities you have on your build from your kit but the big one is faded fortune so when you consume a crux or create a crux you do get an additional 12 percent crit damage you know stack that on top of fighting finesse if you want to stack that on uh, minor force which we're already getting you stack this on top of the khajiit passes your crits do hit really really hard so before you go in for your burst just please be sure you're in combat and you either consume a crux by activating impervious room ward or maybe you generate a crux by using syphilis flail it's entirely up to you just be sure before you go into your burst you are generating or consuming a crux somehow that's me Next ability on the bar is Syphilis Flail. This is also going to generate a crux and is also an AoE execute. I'll explain how we do that in combo here in just a moment. And then uh, the next ability we have here is kind of of a flex spot. You can toss in whatever you want here. You can toss in Impervious Rune Ward or one of my favorite is Evolving Rune Men, which is going to heal you as well. The thing is, once you, let's say, for example, if you put on Rune Men or whatever, you're in combat, you generate crux. Once you get up to three cruxes, you don't have a way to consume it so technically you don't get your passive that we just went over that's going to give you the amount of crit damage you see right here faded fortune right it's not popping up anywhere that we're at three and since you're at three cruxes there's no way of consuming them so you're never going to get that crit chance again so you get a kind of or a crit damage again excuse me so you have to kind of weigh that in your options when you do your flex spot so just for the sake of the video and for the sake of the, the bombing, um, I have one that generates a crutz and the one that consumes it just to make sure you got that passive going for you. It's not necessary, just like a little snafu thing. In place of Impervious Rune Ward, you can also run Rune Guard of Freedom. This is going to give you minor resolve, minor protection. It's going to heal you when you get below 50%, and it's also going to give you 3,000 armor when this applies. And you're also going to get six seconds of crowd control immunity, and this is going to be very, very helpful when you need to actually get your combo off. Okay, so let's go over the combo. I was able to get up on this Oaken Soul build with all the triglyphs and nothing really been optimized. I was able to get up to a 57k heavy attack, and the, the combo is very, very simple. The only thing you have to do is just have your Lightning Storm down. You want to toss your ultimate, you want to toss Ellie Drain on, use your rune to pull people in, and then right when it pulls them in, your heavy attack is going to go off and it's going to hit them. So it hit for 52k there, and then again, you can continue to channel this for up to, you know, three heavy attacks. Now, if you want to get nutty with it, obviously, you can have your blockade storms down, you'll cast your ultimate, right? You'll use Ellie Drain, you'll cast your rune in to pull them in, and then right at the tail end of the heavy attack, you just boom, execute. See, that was 52k, 42k, boom, 55k, you know, 22k from the execute. Most people won't live. Any if they get pulled in, they're going to get hit with the, the last hit to the heavy attack, which is like 52k. Obviously, Civilist Flail is not going to hit for 44k. You know, this is PvP, mind you. All the other damage is still going to be applicable because that's applying it to the actual monster. And then it takes that monster's damage, right, and disperses it to everyone around it. So the Battle Spirits going to reduce that damage by 50%. So a 55k is actually going to hit people for like, what, like a 25, you know, 26, 27k, you know, something like that. And Syphilis Flail, on average, I was able to hit my homie for around 8 or 9k when it crits. So even just with the final tick to the Lightning Staff and one instance of Syphilis Flail, you're going to be hitting people for over 30k worth of damage. And they try to break free and run away, well, you can just chase them and keep flailing them. So again, we'll just kind of slow down the combo. You want to have your, your blockade of elements down. You want to cast your ultimate, okay? Next, you want to apply Ellie Drain, and then you want to use your Pool CC, and then you want to channel a Heavy Attack, and then as soon as the Heavy Attack gets done, use Syphilis Flow to finish off your opponent. So hopping over into the champion points, um, at the time of making this video, I'm using Exploiter because you'll be targeting your orb, and it's always going to be off balance during the combo. 
Mastered Arms. Um, I would actually replace Mastered Arms if you want to truly bomb people. You will replace this with a Coal Overload, which is going to do irresistible Daedric damage to anyone, assuming you kill them, which is going to do a lot of damage. But just at the time of making this video, I'm going with Mastered Arms. You 100% have to have Weapons Expert and then Biting Aura. You could potentially take off Biting Auras again and put on a Coal Overload. It's entirely up to you. So when it comes to red tree, just anything that's going to increase your survivability is the way to go. So we got survival instincts, pings refuge, sustain with suffering, and fortified. Green tree doesn't really matter, but always go with liquid efficiency, war mound, gifted rider, and steed's blessing, just so you can run back to your death much more quickly. Well, that about does it for today's video, guys. If you found any information at all helpful in this video, I would really appreciate a like and sub, and do not forget to hit the bell notification icon so YouTube tells you when I go live. I will continue to playtest the Arcans on the PTS, and if I find any more crazy or wacky builds, you guys will be the first to know. And before I peace out, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members. You guys are the totes, my goats, the bomb.com, the bees knees. I appreciate you guys from the depths of my soul. Thank you so much for helping me out on the channel. That about does it for the video, guys. This has been Horcrux, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.